Finally getting something that I've been asking about for quite a while. Happy 30th anniversary, Warcraft. What up viewers, what up, what up, CalcTubes here, and today is Friday, November 15th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Like I said, uh, Warcraft celebrated its 30th anniversary this uh, this week. Um, they had about a 45 minute presentation, followed by um, some orchestral playing of some classic Warcraft music. Um, but uh, the big thing that I got that I've been asking about for quite some time is they remastered, and I talked about it last week, that there was a little bit of a leak. Um, but it looks like they've like somewhat reskinned and remastered Warcraft 1 and 2. Um, they've also added some quality of life improvements, like being able to select multiple troops and I think hotkeys and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, Warcraft 1 and 2 are available right now uh, to play via Battle.net. I actually had to upload or I had to update my Battle.net and log in so that I could see that each of the games costs about ten bucks. Um, and then they've got the battle chest where you can buy all three, which is awesome. Um, they also talked about how they are adding some graphical updates to Warcraft 3 Reforged. Um, so, you know, it, I know that that Warcraft 3 Reforged has had quite a journey. Um, and I'm still looking forward to playing through the entire campaign because I love that so much. But now I can start at the beginning and play through it all. Um, There's a couple other things they talked about, about Warcraft Classic and, uh, you know, new raids and new content for that. Uh, I do play Warcraft Rumble, so they... I've been doing an anniversary event for that, for their one-year anniversary on that. Um, but yeah, uh, all in all, it was pretty exciting to see all the things that Warcraft has meant over the past... World, World of Warcraft has meant over the past 20 years, and Warcraft over the past 30, uh, and everything that has gone on with that. So, like I said, I'm very excited. Uh, I've, I've already downloaded Battle Battle.net, and, and I'm going to try and hop in and play those sometime soon. So looking forward to experiencing it all fresh again and seeing how much how much change there was and there was a lot of uh hoopla around like how much revisionist history they have in world of warcraft versus like what actually happened in the first games uh anyway i'm excited to play those games and i'm looking forward to checking those out sometime soon uh we got to see a little bit more about machine games is indiana jones gameplay i know that we saw some gameplay coming out of i don't remember if it was summer game fest or gamescom but uh this was a full 15 minutes of pure Indiana Jones gameplay uh, this week. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking forward to the Indiana Jones game coming out of Bethesda slash Microsoft, uh, yeah, you can get to see a little bit more uh, gameplay there. I still don't quite, like, I obviously I get the connection between Machine Games and Indiana Jones, um, but, like, how, yeah, the gameplay just it seems a little weird. Like, it's first person, there's a lot of punching going on, as opposed to, like, a Wolfenstein shooter, so... Yeah, I it's still a little lacking there for me, but uh, I'm curious what other people think. The LEGO games have always been very IP-driven, um, and they've been very consistent. Um, and I'm somewhat excited to see the latest LEGO game that launched this week, uh, LEGO Horizon Dawn. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. So, I think it's just called the Horizon Adventures. LEGO Horizon Adventures. Um, according to reviews, it's, it's very much a rehash of the first game. Uh, as someone who didn't play the first game, I would fully, you know, be interested in just playing through that uh, potentially with my wife, uh, like very, you know, looking very, for very forward to that. Uh, the also the new engine looks great. I think there's a lot of things that, that are were the positive things that people were um, talking about in the reviews. It is currently at a 71 Metacritic. Um, a lot of people are citing that the tone slash themes are a little bit clashy. I assume that Horizon is trying to tell a deeper, more adult, more and more mature story, um, and that the tone of like a Lego games with like it's slapstick and it's you know little bits might not fit in with you know the the greater Horizon narrative. And if you played the original Horizon, if you're rehashing all the old stuff, it seems like that's also held against them. But as someone who didn't and is look could could uh, enjoy playing a look slight you know a very polished new engine lego game with someone else and also experience the storyline uh it'd be right up my alley so looking forward to that <clears throat> had to do a little digging this week to remember everything that's happened previously on arc raiders uh the big thing that was uh shown off this week is they showed off like five uh again another like eight or ten minutes of gameplay um and 
I kind of reminded myself of the full history. Arc Raiders originally was just supposed to be an open world shooter uh, with like PvP, PvE, and you're supposed to be fighting robots. Um, and I think <clears throat> after the company behind it invested more in the finals, they wanted to like separate themselves from that. Um, so I think they've added the PvP element to this and made it more of an extraction shooter. So it feels like futuristic Tarkov with you know mo with you know uh, robots to fight inside the game. Uh, and yeah, it just kind of caught my eye. I could definitely see me and a squad of friends hopping in, trying to see if we can survive. I know that not all of them are big fans of, of extraction shooters, and I'm not really either. Um, but the PVE portion could could uh, could give us a you know give us some fun. I know that like the hunt showdowns out there with PvP PVE, um, but you know the fact that it's futuristic and survival and and uh, post apocalyptic means that uh, that's a little bit more up my alley, and so. I'm curious how, you know, how this will potentially elevate extraction shooters. Survey finds something that we all know this week, but was published this week, um, that uh, children 10 to 17 year olds prefer games under the Christmas tree rather than money. So rather than a fat paycheck or a, or a gift card, everyone always says, you know, gift cards are fine, but most people don't believe that um, and they're just being nice to you. Um, but yeah, games are, um, you know, people would rather put games now there's so many games out there nowadays, so I know that it can be hard buying in the holiday, you know, to put the right game under the under the Christmas tree. Um, but it sounds like people would much rather have a you know a game under there, or you know just buy it on a Steam account and gift it to them. So uh, there are ways to digitally give people games, since that is the way most people consume their games nowadays. But uh, but yeah, I think this is uh, you know nothing new here. I think anybody who was a kid growing up and and looking to unwrap gifts in the holiday season would definitely rather have like the 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 game than the, than money to buy the game theoretically. Um, so yeah, I I uh, I've definitely surprised bought people white elephant gifts or, or stuff like that that are just games. So uh, looking forward to uh, yeah, I, I, nothing I didn't already know, but it was a cool thing to kind of see uh, confirmed via research this week. <clears throat> The producer of Zelda talked this week. Um, I know that we've had Echoes of the Echoes of Wisdom for quite some time now, uh, and I know that a lot of people were talking about the death of the 2D Zelda game uh, back when Breath of the Wild was coming out and saying that all Zeldas from this point forward have to be like this, which I don't necessarily agree with being true. I did enjoy my time with Echoes of Wisdom. I liked the more bite-sized uh, nature of it as opposed to a big hundred hour long as someone who didn't even complete tears of the kingdom and did complete echoes of wisdom like you know having to only put 30 hours in rather than 200 to get through the game is is uh, definitely holding me back there um and yeah the producer talked this week about how it'll probably consistently be one 2d zelda game and one 3d zelda game much like how we get uh one 2d mario game and one 2d Mar or 3d mario game uh each kind of console generation so you got Odyssey, and then you got Wonder, and then you've got, uh, uh, what's the most recent Mario game? Yeah, you got, you know, you got those two, you know, 2D, maybe we'll keep getting, I hope we keep getting games from the studio that made Link's Awakening, and now Echoes of Wisdom, and hopefully we continue to get 2D Zeldas, even though I've always been more of a, you know, Ocarina of Time 3D Zelda fan, but uh, I do enjoy these kind of bite-sized Zelda experiences, so... Uh, glad that they will continue that way for the foreseeable future. There's a brand new limited edition Steam OLED deck uh, that's all white. And as someone who prefers the like white console versus the black console, uh, I definitely have always liked the kind of polished, pristine uh, nature of like a pearly white uh, uh, console. So, uh, And I don't have a Steam OLED. I only have the original. So... Uh, I could definitely see myself upgrading. I just have to get rid of my old Steam Deck. So uh, I'll have to see what it trades into games, game, uh, GameStop for. Uh, or if someone's looking for uh, uh, a, what was the top of the line? Like the 650 uh, original Steam Deck. So uh, I, could, I could definitely be parted with that. So I could get some money and put it towards a white Steam Deck. Looking forward to that. Uh, got a confirmed release date. There are games coming out next quarter. Uh, I know that most of us are probably waiting for the Game Awards to start filling out our slate for all the competitive games coming out in uh, 2025, which there are 
ridiculously few so far kind of in the calendar for next year uh, other than Monster Hunter Wilds. Uh, but there's another one, uh, Atom Fall, which I think you've probably heard of. It's a kind of post-apocalyptic uh, survival game, and it's very British, as as per the trailer I saw this week. And I remember there being like a, a old phone booth kind of uh, call box um, style in their thing, and there's like robots, and yeah. So uh, some people are saying that it looks very Fallout-esque. I don't think this particular trailer looked very Fallout-esque, but I have seen the like, you know, you're managing a a civil uh, a community and, and trying to like save them all and there's going to be quests and it's a R very rpg-esque so uh, but yeah adam fall has a confirmed release date of march 27th 2025 so uh yeah put that on your calendar and if you got nothing is if currently based on the calendar i've got nothing going on towards the end of march so i could definitely see myself picking that one up Saw a new game announced this week called Trash Goblin, and with a name like that, I don't think I need to elaborate anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah, you are a goblin who runs a shop, which is already, like, everybody wants to be a shopkeeper nowadays. Very, very fun sim to play through. Uh, and you get a, a, an allotment of trash every week, and you have to make it into something that people want to buy. So, uh, yeah, I think this could be a very fun uh, kind of shop sim game. I think it's got a great name, like I said, and uh, yeah, who doesn't want to be a goblin that fixes up trash and and uh, overall kind of good message about recycling. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Trash Goblin. I've already added it to my Steam wish list. Last but not least this week, got a new trailer for the video game anthology series coming to Amazon Prime called Secret Level. Uh, and, you know, other than the fact that the soundtrack during the trailer made it seem, you know, has a lot of heart behind it. Uh, I really think this is going to, you know, kind of add a level of, uh, or, you know, immersion into these kind of game worlds that we don't normally see. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm curious kind of what the Warhammer stuff is going to be. I know there's going to be some God of War stuff. Uh, looks like a lot of people are probably hyped for the Mega Man kind of short. So uh, and people are very curious about how Concord is going to be represented in that it's going to be probably the only game on there that doesn't actually have a game on there that isn't actually a, a video game. Um, so yeah, I'd be curious to kind of see how Concord's going to look in that light and how, uh, how we kind of reflect on that, knowing what we know about Concord now, but, uh, but overall, yeah, I think the trailer is definitely worth watching. So, uh, I'll have a link down below for you to check that out, but that is it for this week. Let me know if you feel I forgot anything down below in the comments or on my Discord, I have my Discord link down below for you to I always love talking to people about what's happening in video games over there on my Discord. But as always, thanks for watching. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend. And I hope you have a super day. Bye!